decided to invite somebody really important who's had an association with our Guruji long and fond. We have a midsters, a connoisseur of music, art, literature, and cinema. Maybe connoisseur is not the right word. I can't even call him a critic. I can't call him a musicologist because that will be limiting his contribution if I label him thus. <coughs> Sir, may I call you an aesthete who has studied, researched, written articles, scholarly papers, more than a whopping 120 papers, written innumerable books, disseminated knowledge, not just among students, but society at large. His fields of specialization can be enumerated thus, feminist theory, post-colonial theory, film theory, film communication, critical theory, Indian writing in English, and many more are his fields of interest. He's a recipient of many prestigious awards. Currently, he is teaching postgraduate students at National College, Baswingudi. His latest publications include three books on cinema and cultural theory, moving images and multiple realities, three loka and three dhyana. I must confess that I have failed in encapsulating his achievements and accomplishments. I have not done justice at all. But paucity of time, and because we want to listen to him and not to me, forces me to this lapse. Once again, I must say, he's the right person to speak about Guruji because he knows not only Guruji, but knows Guruji's music, the gharana, and its multifold dimension. Sir, the stage is all yours for the next 45 minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, after this, uh, lecture of 45 minutes or talk of 45 minutes we'll be having a small tea break and make sure to come back to your seats within 15 minutes and then we will have the mana of Guruji's music. Thank you so much. To our talk. Three things uh, converge. The Jaipur Atwali Garana, the great Malikarjun Mansur, and of course, Pandikarajun Mansur. So when I deal with Jaipur Atroli Garana, I'm also dealing with Pandit Malikarjun Mansur and Pandit Rajik. This is my trajectory, that you can't turn to the whole tradition without naming people. And when you discuss people in particular, we are also dealing with an entire tradition. So the introduction is based on my nearly four, four and a half decades of, of very, very First, <clears throat> Pandit Malikarjan Mansur. Where do we begin? <clears throat> Is it enough if we just begin by naming Ustad Alarabi Akansa, Badal Kansa, or the two sons, illustrious sons, who are also the teachers, Ustad Manji Kansai and Ustad Guruji Kansai. When we do that, and then come to Malika Jan Mansur and Rajshikar Mansur, we are listening to stories of continuities and divergences, not discontinuities. The entire Jaipur Troli Garana is based on a certain sense of continuity, but it's not a linear chronological progression. There are great divergences. So I also plan to show what those divergences are. Next, <clears throat> so begin with Bade Khan Saab, Aladiya Khan Saab, come through Manji Khan Saab, Burji Khan Saab, Malika Jan Mansur and Rajshikar Mansur. You are listening to a whole range of something from its source through several great articulations to people who have changed the contours of the Jaipur Atrolikara. This cannot be explained, cannot be understood in terms of mere musicology through grammar. Vyakarana, Shastra is essential. 
But correct grammar does not produce great poetry. So correct Shastra, Vyakarana and music does not produce great uh, musical metaphors. <coughs> Much as, as one deals with grammar as a starting point, you cannot hold on to grammar. You cannot just talk of dumb arohana, avrohana. You must imbibe it to get it into his being. And therefore, when you listen to a whole musical tradition, you cannot believe that certain things are fixed. They are not static. They have their own great dynamics. And these dynamics keep altering. And as the great Eliot said, it's idiom that's altered by a genius. So we must look at changing registers, changing idioms, and how those registers and idioms change. Otherwise, it becomes mechanical, monotonous repetition. This is not the story of repetition. And that's why, <clears throat> let's, let's look at how this journey began for Malikarjun Mansur with the Gwalior tradition with Nilakantabua, an ascetic. It was here that Malikarjun Mansur began his ascetic training in music and converting music into a profound religious experience. And the religious experience had this musical quality. Inseparable have these two been. I will come to particular ragas and talk of those things. The kind of religiosity, not religion, not institutionalized religion. It's not jati, it's not samstika dharma, but a certain kind of religious vision. Look at, look at the two integral components which are inseparable. Vasvana, Gallamakrubu, Akmaha Devi, great wanderers, great mystics, this formed one edifice for Malikarjan Mansur. That his music had this edifice of the great visionaries, of the great mystics. And therefore, in that sense, not going by the shallow debates, he was a Lingayata, as a dharma, not as a jati. What did it mean? that it meant the linga as a physical object, substantial, but it's through that that you go beyond it, that you convert it into atma linga, into jyotar linga. Listen to his Mrutvinjaya uh, Supravata available, and you will see how the physical, how the concrete object, object transforms itself it does not dissolve, it does not disappear. The linga held on hand evolves into, metamorphoses into Atma linga, into Jyotar linga. And that's why the concrete example is the Mrutunjaya Supravata. Where did he get it from? I'm talking of two stories when I deal with Malikarjan Mansur of the Nijikana Shiv Yogi Bhavadhan and Mrutinjaya Swami. He used to call him Mrutinjaya Tapala. Shall we develop this a bit? It means that the devotional, religious, mystical registers had to be underlined by concrete musical phrases. That his religiosity failed if his music did not transform, if his shadja, the value of shadja that he learned first from Nilakantabua, if the shadja failed, look, look at the great consciousness, the great mind that worked. If the shadja failed, because it's through the shadja that you move into the other notes, into the other swaras. If shadja fails, your music fails, and if your music fails, your religiosity fails. This was the total holistic integration of this man. Listen to Bahaduri Tori, He Mahadev. Listen to something that's not religious in this sense, 
इस जोलपुरी हम जयो पिया के घर द काइंड ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ऑफ नोट्स the kind of combination of notes whatever raga he took now was steeped in his understanding of the fact that the swara itself was god and that his sense of god that his sense of relationship with god would fail if his music was not perfect so it was swara dhyana it was shiva dhyana and if shiva dhyana failed this swara dhyana would not succeed and mere swaradhyana without shivadhyana would not lead in any way this was the kind of integration this was the kind of holistic integration that kept malikarjun once going then what what does he do with other things and therefore for him when he talks of rasayatra this autobiography translated by rajika the rasayatra is bhakti yatra and there is no bhakti yatra without this rasayatra this was the deep profound religiosity and in that sense for him the lingayat dharma and the lingayat dharma as i have said is not part of any sect it's part of a vision it's part of a cosmological vision and if that failed what he held in hand you must watch all those things and to listen to his music is to watch is to see is to visualize the power of his music and the power of his religious if this is the background what was it that rajikarman so inherited without being in the narrow sense an atheist anti religious rajikarman so is like us carrying a modern sensibility he is modern in the sense that he is one who transformed his father's profound religious metaphors into aesthetic metaphors in fact if you turn to rajikarman sir's music you will see that without having that conviction arrogance without having that pompous self declaratory note that he is very deeply religious in fact in one of my interviews he says that i am not as religious that as a deep make him an atheist or anti religious but to claim to be religious it takes a certain kind of conviction or if you don't have that conviction if you declare it's a pompous statement of arrogance neither of those in him but to say that i convert the religiosity of my father into modern aesthetics this is the first change of registers listen to malikarjun mansur rigorous breathtaking virtual ascents into those steep virtual climbs you have the horizontal you have the mellifluous you have the melodic and you have a different kind of musical register already in the malikarjun mansur music so if you look at look at these shades pieces where rajikar mansur sings with his father cut with the other the cheese or ek nishad bihagda i am talking of those things where the both of them sing bairamari or nat bihagda jan 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 bhail gaaj you will see if the father the guru has one kind of a climb one kind of an ascent ascent the sun contrasts it provides a counterpoint so it's not the shan it's not just the shagir it's not the shishya but one who creates a different kind of a the word is upach the creative process that if there is one major register predominant register that's not a hierarchical link it's not a hierarchical scheme even as the father is singing you will notice that this son disciple already introduces contrasting registers counterpoints and those registers 
that are not mere continuities, mechanical continuities, nor are they discontinuities, but they are musical divergences. And this makes for the beauty of the Jaipur Atroli Garana. So the Jaipur Atroli Garana is not a single shade, it's not a single color, it's not a single texture, it keeps varying. For that matter, I still remember, he may not remember, 2003, there was this national program, All India Radio. I was listening to it carefully. And if you listen to, I can provide you with the recording. Raisa Kannada and Sampurna Malkons, which Malikarjun also sang. But even as an independent performer, so far I have referred to the performances where both of them sang. But if you look at the 2003 national program of music recording, Raisa Kannada, Sampurna Malkons, you will see that it's not Malikarjun Manso, it's not a story of continuity. You will see new registers, new plasmics, new upachi. When did this take place? Not after the father passed away. In fact, when singing Jogya Asavari with Malikarjun Manso. And if you look at the Shuddha Kalyan piece, even as the father was creating a certain kind of an upach, singing, sitting beside his father was Rajshikar Mansur, creating new upach, stunning his father, startling almost his father, who acknowledged that new creative blossomings were taking place. So it was Tarim on one hand, it was Riyas on another. You cannot just convert learning into mere mechanical tali. That you just learn, pick up, mechanical, monotonous, that you produce, <coughs> reproduce. You will have to subject the tali received from the guru into your own reals. And therefore, you are in the guru's footsteps, but you are also branching off. You are making your own takeoff. It's like pure gestalt. So the story of learning is the story also of creative improvisation. It cannot be, as we express it in Kannada, mere gili pata, that you repeat it art like. So turn to Jogya Savari, turn to Shuddha Kalyan. Whenever I make a statement, that's why I offer it with concrete illustrations. Where did this story begin of continuities and divergences? It began with Malikarjun Mansur himself during one of the <clears throat> concerts, a very old listener, a veteran, I believe accosted Malikarjan Mansur and said, this was not how Aladiya Khan Sahib took it up or Manji Khan or Guruji Khan. There was no argument. Malikarjan Mansur does it exactly the way Aladiya Khan Sahib did. Repeated by saying, this is how Manji Khan Sahib did. Then said, this is how Guruji Khan Sahib did. But I am not a stenographer. I am not here to take dictation. If I can sing the way they did, then where is my Adunikata? Where is this Parampara? Parampara is not a dead thing. It's not static. It's not a lifeless river. It keeps flowing. If we receive from Parampara, Let's also not forget that Adunikata transforms the parampara. It's not a one-way hierarchical vertical structure. That's why I said verticality itself finds different kinds of bases through horizontal patterns. And we cannot create hierarchical structures. 15 minutes I'll finish. <clears throat> Which is why Rajshikha Mansur, reflecting on his father's music, says that there are three components. So I'm also turning to Rajshikar Mansur, not just as a performer, but also as somebody who has theorized on his garana, on his father's music, his own music. So he says the three vital components, which is what everybody who is creative, painting or music or sculpture or poetry must be acutely conscious of. He talks of three separate paradigms. The manan. Manan is also the act of thinking, conscious thinking of what you learn, what has been taught. It's a very conscious process leading to chintan, 
to learn, to acquire, to imbibe simultaneously. They are not separate categories. But it begins as an act of learning where you get the basics right. You can't do anything without the basics. You can't have a vertical takeoff on all the grounds. But then the act of learning itself should lead to thinking and then to manthan. Now the manthan is, these are indescribable words, but we have to use terminology to communicate. So to learn, to get the basics, to think, to analyze, shall we use that word, to split it, discuss it, and then to subject it to your own being, that it becomes a part of your being, where that being carries both your conscious and unconscious registers, unconscious aspects. Where would you find these? If I were to make statements, where would you find it in Rajshikar Mansur's rendering? Look at his rendering of Miyaki Toi, all available, Lachasak, Megavari, Barari, Sugrai, Golden Gauri, I'm naming only a few, otherwise I will go on listing out ragas. <coughs> and turn to Meera Bali Ki Malhar, which Malik Arjun Mansur sang, which Rachikar Mansur sings, Meera Bali Ki Malhar, Tum Garse Ganesha is the piece there. Or Koker, no, musicians who have been singing for 40, 50 years would not even have heard of Koker. Ananda, Aj, Ananda, Mukachandra, the piece. Contrast it, look at the juxtaposition there. I haven't listened to, I don't know if they are available. Certainly not Aradhya Kansa, Manji Kansa, Purji Kansa. But I can give you right now at least 30 to 40 to 50 hours of the music of Malikarjan Mansur. At least 20, 25 hours of Rajakar Mansur's music. Together, you will see the contrast. When he sings solo, you can also look at the manner in which the tradition comes alive, the manner in which tradition has been integrated. So there is that parampara, that tradition. But when I listen to the tradition with at least two pieces of evidences, if not before that, not the progenitors, but then the later pioneers, you will see contrasting shades. You will see enormous counterpoints. And these are not mere musicological elements. These are not mere grammatical elements. No chaste, pure grammar will ever produce poetic paradigms. Music built on Vyakarana cannot produce musical visions. It cannot become poetic. It cannot become a paradigm. I also say this because there's this fetish of fixing, fixing swaras, fixing notes, saying that these cannot be moved, these cannot be altered. Now this is a kind of puritanism, hierarchical puritanism, which will stifle, which will choke up music. What then is, does one turn to music as, as experience, as anubhava? If music is learned, if that is jnana, knowledge, then for those who haven't learned it, who do not have it as jnana, then how does one begin to understand music as experience, as anubhava? This again, is the whole navigation, the journey between the ahat, what is heard, out of which you move to the anahat. If I'm listening to something, it's up to me and it's up to the musician, the creativity of the musician to produce unheard things, the anahat. Which is to say, to use other words, if you have a murta, the concrete, the physical, it's out of the murta, you cannot end up with just the murta, the concrete, the physical, which is essential. But it's up to me. The point I'm trying to make is it's also up to, li up to listeners. It's up to those who believe that they're interested in music. Out of the ahat, can you journey into the anahat? 
the performer out of the ahat can the performer move into the anahat, meaning out of the concrete, physical, substantial solidity of the note, can you move into the metaphorical, can you move into the abstract. There is no abstract without the physical, but the physical cannot end up as just the murta, it must lead to the amurta. And that is when your raga, that's when a swara becomes to continue with anahat, to push it further, it becomes anhat, to mean that it goes beyond boundaries. Hat is within the limited frame, boundaries, marked out registers, but a great musical experience is anhat, boundless, limitless, infinite. How many can we think of? How many can we summon to memory who would move from grammar to imagination to anubhava to anubhava? How many move from the physical core, from the physical self to the unheard, to the abstract, to the amurta? I would like to know. It also means then, which is why Malikarjan Mansur said, there was a time when listeners were discriminating but we have entered times when thanks to the media we have people who are interested but do not understand do not care to understand and in recent times thanks to great uh, reality shows <coughs> next if these are in the realm of swara the other great component of the Jaipur Trolley, of Malikarjun Mansur, of Rajikar Mansur, is the notion of Laya. Laya, not just in terms of Japta, 10 matras or 12 matras or 14 or 16, holding on, move in a mechanical manner, but Laya as time, a sense of time, and that time creating its space to have a bandish in a particular time frame, not just the matra scheme of counting the matras, but do matras become, do they convert themselves into laya, into time, and it's in time that we create spaces, that we create musical registers. How does a tara become laya, become time, and into which words are put, and that you reach the sum wherever you are, wherever you are wanting? In Rasayatra, Malikarjuna Mansur talks of how he reached the sum, created a rupaj, the mukada, the opening piece, how it was difficult and it came to him through <coughs> manan. Chintan, Mantan, all of a sudden, like gestalt, it was a revelation. You may have learned, acquired it in a mechanical manner, you won't get it unless you do what Rajshikar Mansur calls the Mantan. And it's in that, at that particular moment, precise moment, when all your learning, when all your industry, hard work, diligence, produce a flash, what the psychologist would call a gestalt, there's an explosion. Unless you get that explosion, you are not going to get it. It is this sense of the swara creating harmony in a time frame, time. Laya, understand it as time, not just the mechanical structure. And once you reach the sum, you have already gone into the shunya, into nothingness. So you start afresh. <coughs> this does not come through mere mechanical habitual repetition. It comes only when you are able to visualize through the concrete essence of the abstract. Otherwise, you only create frozen structures, fossilized structures, which does not explain the quality of the Jaipura Trolli Karana or Malikajan Mansur or Rajshikar Mansur. And then, <clears throat> 20 percent. Five minutes? Uh, how much time do I have? 
It's because uh, yeah, we have to begin the concert at yes. 7 and yes. it's already yes. 6.40. Yes. Maybe 5, 6 times because I lost 15 minutes, but you don't want no, the concert no. time to be lost. <clears throat> and let's look at the fetish that people make of, and you must turn to Rachi Karmansur's articles. What are the features of a karana? There are those who would pick three or four and make a fetish of it, as if the karana is based on three or four. In fact, in the pieces written in 2015, 2013, one in 2017, he says, and this is the kind of thinking that goes into the making of the Jaipura Trolli Karana and into the making of a musician like Rajshekar Mansu. He says people make too much of the Akkar, whether it's the Akkar or the Than or the Pol Than, does one element constitute the sole living principle of a Karana is the whole concept then do you reduce Jaipura Troli Karana to its Akar, to its Tan or breathtaking Bolthans? Or does one think of a kind of synchronization, of a kind of harmonics? And then to say, so ultimately if you ask the question, what is Jaipura Troli Karana? You can't point out to one, two, three, it does not work in singularity. It's the Bahuvachana that can work, not Ekavachana. It cannot work in the singular, it can work only in pluralities, in multiplicities. And therefore, if you look at Swara, if you look at the Bandish, or if you look at the manner in which they come together, weaving enormous, infinite areas of time and space, would anybody pick, and this is the question to be asked of music itself, and I'm foregrounding it because this has been the <coughs> conscious attempt of people like Malikati Mansur and Rajshikar Mansur. Does one talk of one singular feature as the soul or as the criterion of my musical system? If a musical system has evolved for over a century, then how much, what is the journey it has made? Just as the Zen statement says the river that flows is never the same so the musical system is never the same what does it acquire what does it hone what does it sharpen what does it leave out what it includes also depends on what is left out and what is left out has to be redundant irrelevant which it does not think of so if poets make their journeys from their initial phases to the later phases so do musicians make their journeys from their initial phases to their later phases. A single musician does not operate, a single musician, man or woman, does not operate with a single scheme. Two musicians of the same so-called karana, two musicians don't operate. Then how much more expansive is the nature of the Jaipura Trudy? How does it change? How has it changed, evolved, transformed? And what is it that you are going to listen to in 15 minutes from now? So the journey into the past is to look at the past from the point of view of the present. And there is no present without its stories of continuities. But the present is something that has already branched out in different directions. <coughs> And turn to this sense of time. Turn to this sense of what it is to fuse swara with the word, with the tara as a time sequence. I will not take much of your time, but I will read out from Malikarjun Mansur himself. And look at these things. I'm rushing through for inevitable reasons. And through this, when I read Malika Mansur, the translation has also been done by Rajshikar Mansur. It's also to listen to him through these words. And that's the journey, the, the dynamic journey from the past to the present, from the present back to the past. He 
here he is talking of what it is to arrive at the sum and the sum is not a mere mechanical count it is to arrive at a certain space at that moment time and space <clears throat> he is talking of his experience with Burji Khansa but I must confess that it is very difficult to express in words the finer nuances of his musical genius the Jesus that Burji Khansa had taught were complex conditions to sing and elaborate on them within the framework of a tada, he uses the word tada, translated into time, was indeed a difficult task. Even more difficult was the approach to this sum. It was a herculean task to synchronize, one, the words of the song with the tal, and then conjoin it with the mukda, the opening words of the bandish, and once again return to this sum. So with a single line, you are dealing with time, you are dealing with space and you are coming back in time. However, Bruji Khan rendered these upaj with natural ease. But for me, the great man Malikarjun once was seeing this. It was like performing gymnastics on a tightrope. If I was able to string in the words, the mukra would not fit in. I somehow felt restricted, but after four months, and several ragas, Basanti Kannada, Basanti Kedar, Malbi, Bhagavad Shuddhanat and many more. My mind was always engaged. So from Mantan, Chintan to Manan, Manan, Chintan, it does not follow in the same order. The act of Mantan is also the act of Chintan, is also the act of Manan. While talking in our natural discourse, in our normal discourse, we talk like this. But the act of learning is also the act of listening, is also the act of improvising. And therefore, one day as I was humming a raga and walking down the Hungary lake in Darwad, I suddenly found that I was able to deliver the Mupaj in a varied tempo and maintain the tempo when I reached the Mukhada. I also glided back to the sum smoothly and naturally. I was ecstatic. I had been like a barefooted traveler on the hot sands of the desert. Combination of mere words, the bandish, set to a tada, we call it the tada, but which is a time scheme, and creating a space and coming back to time. The moment you arrive at this sum, you have already moved into shunya, into nothingness, so you have to reconstruct that thing. This is why you see an ascetic, a great teacher of music, a rishi of music, Dattatreya Sadashiv Karuna, one of the recipients of the Malikarjun Mansura Award, said that it was almost impossible for anybody to hold a take-up for Malikarjun Mansura. Because he would be wandering somewhere and just when you thought, this is the sum arriving, the destination, the starting point, where is this man, in one breath, miraculously he would be there at this sum. So moving into outer space, he would land, and from landing, he would, move, he would move into outer space, and just when you thought he was wandering, gone, aimless, a jangama, that jangama would come back and hold his linga, and then move to his ishta linga. That's the Tatreya Sada for you. To listen to Rachekar Mansur, therefore, is in philosophical terms, a contrast, and what I would call in philosophical terms, Antinomy. That is, two things that appear to contradict each other, but two things that recreate, reconstruct each other and are valid in their own right. <coughs> skipping. <coughs> the last part after having skipped quite a lot. <laughs> Malikar so practicing and Rache Karmansur singing and also reflecting on the other great component of the Jaipura Trolikarana. And you will also see what a lot of thinking has gone into Rache Karmansur's music. The notion of the Jod Ragas. What are Jod Ragas? Are they attachments? Basanti Kedar, Basanti Kanada, Patmanjari. Is it a combination of 1 plus 1 plus 1 making 3 or 3 plus 2 making 5 or 4 plus 2 making 6? 
बसंती खेदर बसंती खान खड़ा पट मंजरी खट आर वी गोइंग टू रिड्यूस जोड़ रागस एंड दिस इज राजी कर मंजूर साहब की बात दैट वन प्लस वन प्लस वन डस नॉट टोटल अप टू एनीथिंग इट टोटल सब टू समथिंग व्हिच पर्हाप्स वी वुड कॉल द फोर्थ डाइमेंशन that it creates it's not even a synthesis that you take two pieces join them and create a synthesis it's not the synthetic part of it also you don't synthesize but you evolve into something else so numerical counts don't work you must only listen to rachekar mansur singing all these things and therefore rachekar mansur argues which is his music reflection practice that you have to see them as sankirna ragas something very complex and complexities are not arithmetic they are not mere mathematics it's almost like saying when you come to the world of music 3 plus 3 can be 14 15 18 1 plus 1 can be 4 so a whole the notion of the whole is not just the dead sum total of different parts so 4 plus 1 do not add up to this notion of the jod jod is to integrate but what is this meaning of integration that if you bring 2 3 4 together each has its identity specific identity particular identity blending with another merging into another and to merge into another is not to lose one's identity this is not a question of loss of identity but when the two come together holding on to their identities there is the spark of the third or the fourth or the fifth so what are these jod ragas similarly rachikar mansur reflecting on the aprachalit ragas not heard and when you haven't heard something it means two things that there aren't people who are able to give expression abhyakti to them. and it also means the aprachalit not known not heard means that the anahat becomes ahat that you are giving voice to what is usually not heard and something that's not heard is not something that can never be heard it doesn't work like that so binaries don't work binary opposites don't work so if you have the jod as complex and complexities are heterogeneous and they are not homogeneous entities their diversity is plurality is they move at the horizontal plane and out of the horizontal plane something springs up in a vertical manner and what is vertical creates its own horizontal spaces so factors of time and space are not factors that are fixed static that's so dynamic and dynamism is something that cannot be controlled and if you try to control dynamic elements of nature which is not which is what music is all about <coughs> if you control the dynamic aspects of nature then you have stifled it killed it choked it these are actually karma's reflections so a jod raga is to be understood as a very complex process not a finished product and processes do not complete themselves their designs multiply their designs go beyond imagination and their designs defy easy simplistic categorization and to talk of the aprachalit which is also what malikarjun mansur commissioned his son his shishya rajikar mansur to do that the world must have more of the aprachalit which is another way of saying that the anahat must become ahat and once it becomes part of the ahat what is heard what is shared goes to the samudaya then it enters the territory of the hat moving into the anahat the boundless so the music of rachikar mansur begins with a certain territory the hat music has its grammar poetry has its grammar and out of grammar you create metaphors and the jaipur or trolley gharana lives on with rachikar mansur through 
poetic metaphors that transform themselves <coughs> into notes and become musical metaphors. Thank you so much. understood my music, felt it and experienced it. Thank you so much. Uh, my father gave me this tree and he elaborated this, this tree which uh, my father gave me. I'm thankful. <laughs> that is absolute music. Yes. Yeah. Music in prose. Thank you, sir. What a revelation that some is Shunyata. Something to carry back home. Uh, thank you once again. What Sir has given, apart from music to us, is a feeling of togetherness. And all the disciples of Sir have gathered here to celebrate his 75 years of musical journey. I'm grateful to each one of you for having come here. The next part of the uh, proceedings will be uh, the rendition by Guruji which we will continue after a small tea break. Thank you, everybody. I'm not going to thank my Guru Bandhus because we are all one. Thank you so much.